the rivalry that once brought out the best in both teams, has reached embarrassing heights. Toledo's dominance of Bowling Green has taken the luster away from the Battle of I-75. On Wednesday night in Boyd Perry Stadium, the Rockets turned a tight, high-scoring affair into a snoozer as they blew out the Falcon 66-37 before a crowd that barely dented the Dwight's capacity. It was Toledo's eighth straight win in the rivalry, and it was the most lopsided of victories during the recent stretch. The win evened the all-time series at 39-39-4. It's frustrating for us. But I'd say it's more frustrating for the community, senior defensive tackle Gus Schweiterman said. You constantly hear it in the offseason, and it just builds to the week before the game. Disappointed we couldn't do more for this community that has supported us even in the lean years. It's the longest winning streak for either team since Bowling Green, 2-9, 2-5, 1-12 straight from 1955-66. to The Rockets, 9-2, 6-1 back, didn't need to do anything flashy on this cold and windy night. They pounded the ball over and over, then occasionally found a wide-open receiver, either down the sideline or over the middle. Toledo did whatever it wanted whenever it wanted. It scored on 10 of its 13 possessions, including 6 of 7 in the second half. Running back Shaq F. Seymour ran for five touchdowns, tying a school record for a single game. Terry Swanton gashed the Falcons for 192 yards, averaging 8.3 yards per carry. Toledo's offensive line, a starting five that has been together for just two games now, dominated up front, paving the way for 389 rushing yards. The Rockets amassed 637 total yards as senior quarterback Logan Woodside was 13-4-18 passing for 232 yards and two touchdowns. We knew it was going to be a running football game, Swanson said. Up front those guys set the tone right away. Bowling Green scored 21 first-half points to stay within three by halftime, but its offense went stale in the final 30 minutes. Freshman Jared Doge was 17 for 30 passing for 270 yards, four touchdowns and an interception. He connected with Taylor Redding twice for scores and threw one each to Scott Miller and Andrew Clare. Toledo needed just four plays in the second half to extend its lead to 31-21 after Seymour ran 23 yards around the left edge. It was the epitome of the evening as Seymour had only green turf in front of with Bowling Green's defensive line and linebackers nowhere to be found. We expected a lot of what we got, Schweiterman said. They didn't run anything that we hadn't seen in practice, that we hadn't seen at film. It wasn't like they threw a whole new playbook at us. Give them credit, they executed well, and they seemed to be really well coached. The score was the first of four for Toledo in the third quarter. The Rockets turned it into a laugher when Bowling Green went three and out, and Toledo scored on its first play on the ensuing drive, a 47-yard pass from Woodside to John V. Johnson to make it 38-21 with 11.45 left in the third quarter. Toledo took advantage of strong field position in the second half with four of its six scores coming on drives of 55 yards or less. The exceptions were a 14-play, 72-yard drive and a two-play, 88-yard drive. I think they came out with a mindset that they were going to be aggressive, Falcons coach Mike Jink said. They executed at a very high level. We didn't tackle well, and they exploited it. They came out in the second half, and they did what champions do, he added. They turned it up another level, and we've got to learn to play at that level. Bowling Green's inability to slow Toledo was alarming from the start. The Rockets had no issues moving the ball on the ground from their opening possession. When Bowling Green brought more players closer to the line of scrimmage, Toledo went over the top for each catch and runs. Rivalry game, we're going to play football, Toledo coach Jason Candle said. The goal is to score every time we have the ball. We gave up some plays in the first half, and I didn't want them to creep back. The loss meant that Bowling Green went winless at home for the first time since 1920, the second season the school fielded a team. The Falcons went 1-4 that season, the lone win coming at Kent State. Bowling Green won one home game in 2010 in Dave Clawson's second year.
coming into this season one of the things we talked about as a coaching staff was if we take care of our home schedule we'll be where we need to be. And we did exactly the opposite, Jink said. Notes, the 66 points scored by Toledo were the most scored by either team in the rivalry, the 103 combined points were the most scored in the all-time series, Woodside's first touchdown pass was his 86th of his career, setting a school record previously held by Bruce Gudkowski, Utah SR Thompkins had 114 yards rushing, 88 coming on a one touchdown early in the fourth quarter. Redding finished with three catches for 78 yards, BG was held to just 80 yards rushing, the Falcons closed the season next Tuesday at Eastern Michigan.